and looking forward to hear, learning from you as well as what I may have, have to offer to all of you. So John, I'd like to first start out by finding out how many people are already familiar with Jahari Windows. So if we could do a poll, just so I can get an idea. So there should be a poll that pops up on your screen. And if you just click, are you familiar with the Jahari window? Yes, no, or not sure. We've got seven out of eight votes so far. So there's only one more. But here I can end polling and show you the results. Great. Share results. Can you see that? Oh, okay, great. Good. All right. That helps me know what I need to do <laughs> as we move forward. Okay. And one more question is how those who are familiar with Jahari Window, how do you use it now? I'm curious to know how folks who know about it, how you might use it. And is everyone off mute and they can speak? I, I did on mute, yeah. So hey, Karen, this is Renee and hello everyone. Um, on Wikipedia, once I was, I was looking up something quick with the Johari window, and I saw on Wikipedia an approach for using it that was new to me, although I was familiar with it already, and that approach is that it had a bunch of adjectives, uh, descriptors, and you could use the Johari window to learn how much of you is in the open space, um, how much of you uh, is in, like, hidden what you hide from others, Basically, it's like you ask people who know you to pick adjectives, and then the things that they pick become your open space. And then the things you pick for yourself but others didn't pick are like your hidden space. So um, that's, that's how I'm using it. Okay. Renee, you can, you can say that again when it comes to that point because I was going to introduce that very <laughs> exercise to everyone. So thank you for saying that. So it, it just um, legitimizes <laughs> that exercise. Anyone else use Jerry Window? So for example, I use it for, uh, to help people communicate when there are sensitive topics that need to be shared. I use it with teams. So this is something that you can use clearly with individuals. And it's, it's, I, it was originally designed that way. But you can also use it with teams and groups and things like that. So I was curious if anyone had any other avenues or ways or purposes for using Jahari, Jahari Window. Well, good. This gives me free reign, John. It does. <laughs> All right. So if we can have that opening slide, please. That'd be sure. great. There you go. Close the poll. Poll close. Stop share results. There we go. Great. All right. So for those who don't know, for those who know, this is familiar to you, but for those who do not know, the Jahari window is a two by two matrix that looks at what people know and what they don't know. So if you'll notice at the top, it says solicit feedback for discovery. And then you see right under it, open blind. This is the area where we seek to learn something and open up our window. Renee just mentioned something, a little something about that that I'm gonna go into more detail about in, just, in a few minutes. Then on the, if you look on the vertical side, it says, or the hor that was horizontal, vertical says self-disclose to inform. This is the area where we open up and share information so that others can learn about us. So John, if we can get the next slide and we can look at each one of these quadrants in a little bit more detail. All right, so the first pane, the upper left-hand pane, there are several names. You might have heard it called Arena. You might have heard it called Area One. We're just going to use Open. Oh, by the way, Jahari Window was designed in 19, about 1955, Joseph Luff and Harry Ingham, and as a, a model or a tool to use for communicating, interacting, self-awareness, understanding self and what can we do to build upon that. There's lots of information on it and I know I've got 15 minutes so if I'm going a little too fast, John will give me the slowdown a little bit. 
But this, oh, the open pain, this is what we know about ourselves and other people know about us as well. So for example, I'll use myself as an example. Something that I know about myself that I'm sure if you're looking at the screen now and can see me, that you know I'm an African-American woman. That would be in the open paint. For John, something that I know about John is he has long hair. John knows he has long hair. So it goes, it could go very deep. It doesn't have to be as surface as that, but that's just an, a, a quick example of something that's, that we know about ourselves that, you, that somebody else or others know about us. And I have a note there that keep in mind Jahari window can be used for teams or groups as well. So this open pain is our sweet spot. This is where we want to make sure we're spending time and, and enlarging that pain. If you think of these four pains as window pains, the open, blind, hidden, and unknown as window pains, we want to open up that first upper left-hand quadrant or window pain because the more it's open, the more people see us, know us, the more we know people, see people, the more we're sharing of ourselves. We'll get, a, get into that in a little bit more detail. So, that, so the goal of it, of the Jahari window, is to open up that pain. The challenge with this open pain is sometimes we can just take things for granted. And so people can sometimes make assumptions because they think they know something that they, that they assume we already know and we might not, and it can cause a problem. So the challenge with the open pain is not taking things for granted or not taking advantage of, particularly with transactional types of interactions. You just need to go here, do this. It's, it's more of a transaction that can get very rote and inauthentic. So you want to keep that in mind as a challenge. What do we want to do here? So what do we want to learn with this open pain is what is it that we need to do in order to open? Not only for ourselves, but if we're working for a group or working with a group, what do we need to do to open up that window? That leads us to the blind cat. Thank you. I think I like our segues, John. <laughs> so the blind, <laughs> the blind pain is the upper right hand quadrant. So again, area one, some people just call that blind spot. And it's, it's, it's very, it's what it is, is things that other people can see about us that we don't see for ourselves. And so that blind pain is one that's very, very curious. Hmm. Let, let me give you an example of the blind pain for myself. Many years ago, I'll never forget this. I was doing a, I was part of a customer service workshop. And at the end, it, was, it, was, it went great. I was one of several presenters and it was well received and all of that. And then I, at the end of the workshop, I looked at the evaluations and three of the evaluations said I was loud. And I said, well, nobody told me <laughs> that I was loud or if I was too loud. I didn't know that. And so that was something that's in my blind spot. They could see it. They were experiencing that I was too loud for them, at least. I had no clue that I was projecting that much. And that's what happens in the blind spot. We all have blind spots. We all can learn something, which is why we want to open up that window pane. Not quite yet. <laughs> we, if the, more we're, the more we are willing to look, find information, ask people, be open to feedback, the more we're going to open up and not have such a blind window pane. The challenge with the blind spot, it, it requires us to just be willing to listen and hear without becoming defensive. Because if someone's giving you feedback that you don't particularly care for, what's the natural human thing to do? Shut down. In order to learn, we've got to stay open. So the learning there is, what's the discovery? I say, be curious, constantly be curious. If you're asking for feedback, be curious about what they say. That leads us to the hidden pain, okay? John? The, the hidden pain is the bottom left-hand corner. This is what we know about ourselves, but others do not know about us. 
And we all have things about ourselves that we keep private. And that's what the hidden pain is all about. It's based <laughs> in things that, we, things that we may believe that people don't have the same beliefs. It could be biases that we are conscious of or unconscious of. They could be fears. Whatever the case may be, that's usually what's, what's in a hidden window. What we want to do is to open that up by sharing, self-disclosing, talking about how we feel, what we see, what's our impression, even if it differs from other people. Because the more we're able to open up, the more we're able to build trust, the more we're able to build trust, the more we're able to stimulate conversations. And that's why we're here to, to, together today is to talk about how can you use this model to stimulate conversations and build communication. What's the learning here? Oh, uh, the challenge is being willing to open up. What can you share? The, the learning is striking a balance between self-disclosing, saying something, and those things that you need to hold private that you still maintain your privacy. So for example, a leader of a team can't tell the team every single thing about every decision that is being made, perhaps at that time. But perhaps what that person can say is that there are changes, the changes will require A, B, C, I will fill you in on more information as it becomes available to me. That's a good way to handle the hidden pain. And then last but not least is the unknown pain. And that's pretty much, who knows? <laughs> I don't, we don't know, don't, don't know what's, what's in that pain and nobody else knows either. But the charm here, the joy and the, and, and the thrilling part of the unknown pain is self-discovery, group discovery. What is it that we can do to learn what we need to learn so that we can all be part of this conversation, this communication, that we can all be part of this plan? Whatever it is that the group or the individual is working on, just being willing to dive deep and go into, explore, be curious, ask questions so that it's no longer completely unknown. Sometimes people's hidden talents are in that, that unknown pain. Well, how would you know someone's great with math unless they share or you have a chance to work with them and you can see it? So that's a little bit about the unknown pain. So over in a nutshell, that was very quick, but that's an overview of what the Jahari window, that's fine, John. It, it, it's, that's an overview of what the four quadrants of the Jahari window are all about. And again, if you just search it, you'll get more information. It's a great tool to use. Now, when we started, Renee talked about an exercise she said she found on, on Wikipedia. This exercise is actually um, Joseph Luff and Harry Ingham's way of getting people to uh, get in, use the Jahari window overall. So if you think about the, the Jahari window, the four quadrants, what we're doing here, as she so eloquently described, there are 56 adjectives here. And what someone will do is, if they want some feedback, is look to see which one of these adjectives best describes them. So the amount, if you limit it, I, I always say limit it to seven. This is not a 360 assessment at all. So limit it about to about seven or so adjectives that you're choosing. And then choose, find other people that you can, um, that you trust to give you feedback and ask them to look at the same list and to choose seven, no more than seven. What's important here if you do this exercise though, is to make sure that everyone understands what each adjective means because you can assign something to someone that doesn't have the same meaning. So you want to make sure that that's clear. So others select the, the descriptives, as I've indicated there, and then you map them out. So if you imagine the Jahari window, you then, if you're doing the Jahari window, you then put your adjective in the appropriate quadrant. Is this open? Is this, it, am I aware if this is blind? You may not, if, it, if it's a blind spot, you probably not, are not aware. Is this something that's hidden or this is something that's completely unknown? People who are now giving you feedback do the same thing and they put their adjective within the quadrants. 
Once you do that, you come back together, you look to see, well, what are the, what's in your open quadrant that's, that's the same? Then you know for sure that's open. What will be interesting in this exercise is to discover who has adjectives in the area where, where it's blind, blind spot, or possibly even unknown. Because they, other people won't know what's in your hidden category. So who has something in the blind spot? Again, if they give you an adjective, let's just say independent, and you don't see that, then ask, well, how do you experience that? How, do, how's it, how does that show up for me? That's how you do the exercise. Now, the great thing is you can email me and I will send you a full description of this exercise. I'm not going to just leave this slide with you and like, what is this? You'll just email me and, and John will put my email address in the chat box at some point. Feel free to email me and I will send it to you. It has a, a it doesn't have the, the Jahari window for panes on it, but it will have a full description of what this exercise is and how you might use it. So John, are you, I see there's our phone. John, you around? Are we ready to move forward with our group discussions? Sounds good. I was going to try right. to test and Am share. I, on time? I, I started talking. I wasn't timing myself. Am I on I think time? you're. I think you're to the minute. So okay, here, let, cool. me, <laughs> let me pause the recording so everybody sees the recording stop. So let's do that first. Let's see more. Where is, here it is.